Morning filming Michelle's door. And here's Daddy. He's about to go wake Michelle up. It's not taking more than five minutes. Yeah, we're gonna wake Michelle up. Christmas morning. Oh, there's Michelle. It's in the bed. Michelle, wake up. It's Christmas morning. <gasps> Good morning, Michelle. It's Christmas time. Christmas. Uh -huh. Here's Michelle. It's Christmas morning. <laughs> Ready to open some presents? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Look what Santa brought. Wow. Look at that. Michelle is going to open her stocking. Go ahead. Open up those presents. But first, there's a card. Is there a card? Let's better open that card. Look at that. To Michelle from Santa. I think Michelle's been a good girl this year, so she's getting a lot of presents. But has Mommy been a good girl this year? Good girl, look at this. Ooh, yeah. mommy. Mommy got a watch. Let's see if we can get nice that. Present. That's pretty nice. Why did you and Melanie wake me up? Yet? Because it's time to celebrate Christmas. Because we want to open up presents. Go, go. Open that up. <coughs> Christmas be the first when you truly understand what God's love is all about. Jesus came into the world to, have show, to show you how much you mean to Him. Yeah. You already know how much you mean to us. Love Mommy. Mm -hmm. Right here. I was thinking as to who my father was, and uh, I think maybe Michelle said it best. A friend of ours came over uh, doing some work at the house. And he said, now that looks like a fine, upstanding Christian guy. And my sister goes, no, that's my daddy. <laughs> you know, when Johnny was traveling, um, <laughs> he, he'd take stationery from the hotel where he was staying and, and write a letter. Mm -hmm. hand, hand, you know, handwritten. It's beautiful. And country. send it uh, on the various occasions. He's always always aware of birthdays and, and Mother's Days and Father's yeah, Days. memory so like an elephant. In fact, he used to call, <laughs> he'd call long distance before he'd take off on a flight and yeah. say, well, I'm ready to go, this, 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 you know. Yeah. And, uh, he, he was, was most so, considerate. Tell, uh, yeah. tell the kids about uh, when he went to the store with you that one time. And, and uh, <laughs> and corrected the clerk when he owned the store. Oh. And John was right and he was wrong, you know. Um. And John was very polite. John was never rude. He never, you know, was pushy like that or anything. And so... You realize you took after his dad. Oh. <laughs> it's easier to get married than it is to stay married happily. And as a reminder to me of that uh, challenge, I have a plaque in my bedroom that reminds me often, getting married is easy, staying married is difficult, and staying happily married for a lifetime should rank as one of the fine arts. He is now to be among you at the calling of your heart. Rest assured this true is acting on his part. Shall leave his mother and a woman leave her home. 
then what's to be the reason for becoming man and wife? Is it love that brings you here, or love that brings you life? Or if loving is the answer, then who is the giving for? Do you believe in something that you've never seen? It's easier to conceive a child than to birth one. And it's easier to birth a child than to raise one. Baby mine, don't you cry. Baby mine, dry your eyes. Rest your head close to my heart, never to part. Baby of mine Little one When you play Pay no heed What they say Baby of mine If they knew all about you They'd end up loving you too All those same people who scold you What they'd give just for Down to your toes 
There are times when we say uh, you either laugh or you cry. And this is a time when, uh, knowing John, we have to do both. Uh, obviously, all of us were shocked, just beyond belief, uh, when we heard that uh, John had gone to be with the Lord on Saturday. But it certainly has been um, the sort of thing you couldn't sleep through. Um, it has been a real wake-up call for all of us, and God has reminded us of how precious each day is and how precious our relationships with one another are. John said to me, you know, I am so grateful to be getting to know you because he said, uh, I feel like that you're someone with whom I could really have a Jonathan and David kind of friendship. And I was kind of put off by that, honestly, because uh, I wasn't looking for a Jonathan and David kind of friendship. Um, Jonathan and David were really close, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, I just... It took some time for me to discover what an honor and what a privilege that was. John looked at you, and there wasn't just a twinkle in his eye, there was a light. And he asked probing questions, serious questions, honest questions that needed honest answers. When he suggested that we be really good friends, uh, it took me a while to really appreciate what a gift he had given me. But over time, I learned. You see, over the years, I've known tons of people who saw problem situations and they said, you know, somebody needs to do something about that. But John didn't say that. He did something about that. He was the kind of person who, when there was a need, when there was a problem, he didn't try and find somebody to do something. He did something. He made a difference. He was personally on the line, even in the way that he went home. He is teaching us. He was helping his friend move. 
If you're a real friend, then you seek to meet the need. And John Hoover knew what it was to be a friend. When he crossed heaven, <laughs> it must have been unbelievable to hear the trumpets all over the place and all these nationalities of people who have died just in the past 20 years who came to know Christ to the man who kept sowing seed. And as soon as the seed was, I would say, water it, John. Put some more fertilizer, John. No, somebody else will do that. I need to go over here. John, slow down. Why? <laughs> and now I know why. I try to think, who is John Hoover in the kingdom? He's Johnny Appleseed. I can honestly say, I mean, beyond the costumes and beyond his roles and everything that he believed in, um, he was also a dad. I was watching some old family movies, and uh, there's one scene in which my dad and I are mowing the lawn together on the same mower. He's behind me, and I'm kind of in the, in the inside. And... Uh, as we come towards the camera, he backs off, backs off the lawnmower, and I'm the only one pushing. And all of a sudden, I realize that, wait a minute, this is a bit heavier than it was just a second ago. And uh, I turn around, you know, looking like, okay, where'd he go? And he's standing over on my, on my right-hand side. And, you know, I look at him in the face, and all he's saying is, go, 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 go. And, uh... I, made, I kept pushing and pushing and pushing and made it all the way to the end of the, end of the uh, row there. And I guess if he would have anything to say, it would be, yes, he's taking his hands off of each one of us right now, but he's not, <laughs> he wants us to keep going. He wants us to keep pushing, don't look back, maybe for a, for a minute or two, but keep on going. Amen. Going through some old letters of his, um, I found one that he wrote many years ago. Well, on one of his trips that I'm kind of taking as, I guess, his message to me uh, right now. He said, uh, he said, Paul, I sure am proud you're my son. Of those special gals for me while I'm away. <laughs> Remember one of these days, you too may be a husband and father. So you can sure use the practice. We know he will always live in our hearts as well and that we still carry him in each one of us. If the people we love are stolen from us, maybe the way to have them live on is to never stop loving. Buildings burn and people die, but real love is forever.
Auto Pilot. Here comes Melanie to all our friends and family. Merry Christmas! Squeeze the ear, squeeze the ear. Squeeze it, squeeze it. Okay. And our final sentiment is. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Let go. <laughs> Dad seeking professional. <laughs> This is so precious because it is so costly. And if you are weeping, my friend, let it be for joy because I have good news for you. Three days after they buried him, some women came to the tomb and they found the stone that huge stone rolled away and the tomb was empty. And they rushed to tell us what they had found and we rushed to find out what they had seen. And I, John, a disciple of the Lord, do hereby bear witness that the tomb was empty. I have spoken to the resurrected Jesus I had breakfast with him beside a lake and when I was an old man he appeared to me and he laid his hand on my shoulder and he said do not be afraid I am the first and the last I am the living one I am the one who was dead and am alive now forevermore and I hold in my hands the keys to death and to life. Yes, dear ones, He is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And what Jesus finished in His earthly ministry, He equally intends to finish in my life and in yours. He who began a good work in you will perform it, will complete it, will carry it on to completion. I consider my life worth nothing to me if only I may finish the race, finish the race, and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me, the task of testifying to the gospel of God's grace.